In 2012, I had this idea that I wanted to interview people and share their story on a blog. At that time, I was studying in college, second year, and the only way I knew how to build a website was by writing HTML, CSS code, and doing backend development. But the challenge was that I didn't know how to do that, and I still wanted to have a website. So a friend told me that I should look into WordPress because it's extremely easy to create a website. And that was the first time I heard about WordPress. So I started looking into WordPress, what it is, their themes, their plugins, and I searched for a lot of themes, and I downloaded them to create my blog. But the challenge was that even after I downloaded the theme, I didn't know how to use it because I was extremely new to WordPress. But there was this one theme that had step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use their theme. And the only reason why I used that theme was because they had a YouTube tutorial. A few years later, when we were developing themes for other users to use, I remember this because as a user, I found that video extremely helpful. So when we were building themes, we created uh, YouTube tutorials step by steps. And here's a screenshot of one of the tutorials that we made. Uh, it took me around seven hours to build these tutorials, and it has got more than 200,000 views, 1.8K plus uh, likes, and hundreds of comments. Hi, my name is Roshan. I am co-founder of Codewing Solutions. Uh, some of our products are Rara Themes, Blossom Themes, and Dolby Travel Engine. I've been using WordPress for more than 10 years. Um, and then I have been a team of, um, I have worked with a team to build more than 150 products. And I hope that this tutorial is going to, this presentation is going to be helpful to all of you. Now, before I move into different marketing channels that I'm going to talk about. I want to get a sense of audience that we have today. Uh, could you raise your hand if you are owner of products? Just can I see a raise of hands? Okay, I can see a couple of them. Uh, great. Uh, how many of you are marketers? Could you please raise your hand? Great. Uh, how many of you are part of product development team? Okay, okay, great. So, the first marketing channel that I want to talk about is YouTube marketing. Like I said, how I got introduced to WordPress because of YouTube. So when we were building this product uh, and we were doing marketing of our themes, uh, I want to share one thing that happened while we were doing this. At very early stage when we were building product, uh, we had very limited resources. Um, and so I was doing support, I was doing product development, or at least in the strategic side, I was uh, doing uh, a lot of other things, and also be making video tutorials. So we had created three video tutorials uh, for three of our products, and we had, at that point of time, probably 10 or 12 uh, products, and for those, we didn't have uh, video tutorials. However, we were utilizing a lot of marketing channels. We were doing search engine optimizations, uh, we were exploring uh, social media, at one point of time, as we were looking at different data from what is working for us as a marketing, we realized that the three products for which we had video were bringing in 80% of the revenue. Three products which had video were bringing 80% of the revenue. And that has amazing impact, uh, you know, uh, uh, impact on how we were thinking about marketing. Before, there, before that, we were building, of course, the videos, but not in a very comprehensive way. After that, we changed our strategy and focused a lot on YouTube marketing. And I'm going to share with you how we are doing YouTube marketing so that you could also utilize that for your products. So there are two ways how we do YouTube marketing right now. The first one is we create video tutorials ourselves. And the second is we work with a lot of influencers so that we could leverage their subscribers and then their influence. Now, of course, both have, have their pros and cons. When we, build, uh, when we were starting uh, doing YouTube video for ourselves, uh, there were a few challenges. For example, we didn't have a lot of subscriber, right? So if you start your YouTube marketing from the very start, you don't have, let's say you have, let's say, 100 subscribers. Um, the challenge would be that even if you make a lot of videos, you'll not get a lot of views. And we'll talk about how you can increase the visibility of your videos as well. But the pros are that the cost will be less. Um, you could also, also make sure that you understand your product very well. And like I said in my earlier story, where the reason I used that product, because it had a step-by-step -step tutorial. And so you could cover 
your product step by step and make sure that your user understand how to use your product because nobody knows your product better than anybody else. Right? And so that's an opportunity for you to create a very comprehensive guide for your user to use your product. Of course, the downside, I said earlier, is that you'll have a limited reach for that. So we started working with Influencer in uh, last year to promote some of our product. And one of the advantages that we saw with Influencer Marketing is that we create one video with, let's say, somebody has 100K subscriber, and tomorrow we'll be reaching out within 24 hours to hundreds of, uh, thousands of views. And that was one of the extreme insight that we use for marketing of our product. Now, when we were doing just um, videos for our products, we could create one video, two videos, and we'd get a few hundred views. But when we were working with influencer, and not just one, not just two, but hundreds of influencer, our views skyrocketed. And a lot of people started to learn about our products because the advantage that we were leveraging was somebody else's subscri subscribers who have spent hundreds and thousands of hours to build that subscription base, but also the trust. Because if somebody is recommending your products, they're not just going to recommend because uh, you are paying them. They also need to trust in your product. And because they have... Oh. Oh. My mistake. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, so, so you, you, I would, we were basically leveraging the trust of somebody else because they would try our products, they would like our products, and they would recommend our products. And so this is how we were doing uh, YouTube uh, marketing. Now, while we were doing YouTube marketing, a lot of people stop at just creating videos and or working with influencer, but we went further ahead and tried to increase the visibility of our videos. And we did it in a couple of ways. First, we made sure that we have that on documentation page. I, I believe that if you have video tutorials, most of you include on your video tutorial page. But we also include on our sales page. On whenever somebody downloaded our products, we sent through uh, product download notes. We also added on our documentation page, our support footer notes, and so on. And it helped us in many ways. Now, if you have been doing YouTube marketing for some time, if anybody, anybody does here YouTube marketing? No? OK, I, I see one hand. When you, you, so the way YouTube marketing works is more people watch your videos, and they are engaged. The, Google's, um, the YouTube gives positive signal to your videos. And one of the ways how we were able to increase the ranking of our videos on Google search engine was also by um, having these videos in a lot of places. Now, to give you a few stats on how it worked for us, um, last, year, last year while we were doing YouTube marketing for one of our products, uh, which we were pending for a pretty long time, we had thought like we'll do YouTube marketing, but it was pending. And within a couple of months, we saw an increase of 30% in our revenue. And I believe that it was mostly because of the YouTube marketing that we did. And, and so I would highly recommend that if you have not been doing YouTube marketing, please look into that. Another thing that we have done with the YouTube marketing and the couple of strategies that we use, because all of us probably know that we should invest into YouTube marketing. We should do it because that's where a lot of people learn about how to use product. But a couple of things that we have done that has wo worked exceptionally well for us. One of the strategy has been that, like, when you go to Google and you search for certain things, you, you see results. And same goes with YouTube. And uh, when you, if you're doing search engine marketing, you want to dominate the search results. And the same thing that we had a strategy for our YouTube search result. We work with a lot of influencers, and we, the idea was that at least for top three, or out of 10 for top, uh, out of 10, three rankings should be our videos or videos about our products. Because in that way, we would be able to get a lot of views for our product. That was strategy number one. Another strategy was that we wanted to work with regional people uh, or create content in regional languages. Now, I believe most of you understand English, uh, but there are a lot of people around the world who don't understand English and they still want to use your product. But the challenge would be that there's no video tutorials 
on how to use your product in their language. And so we started to work with a lot of regional influencers and create video tutorials in their language. And as a result, we have seen sales from countries that we had never thought or never had sales before. Uh, another advantage that we had with this approach was that, uh, let's say if somebody's searching in YouTube from Google, uh, sorry, from United States, somebody is searching from uh, Australia, and somebody is searching from Nepal, where I'm from, this, you'll not get the same search result. Right? What somebody will give from the United States, somebody from Australia, and what I'll get is, will be different. Maybe a few similarity, but it will be different. And the reason why that works is, how that works is, um, uh, YouTube gives priority to regional content. So if I speak Nepali, which is the language I speak, and there has been some video tutorial on the keyword that I've been searching for, uh, at least one or two video will be in my language. And so with this approach, with regional content approach, we were able to get uh, ranking in different countries for our keywords. Because if you talk about English, the competition is extremely high. And it can be extremely challenging to get on ranking. Like one way that generally people do YouTube marketing is that you create a video, now you get a views, right? And it stops there. Our approach was that we created videos, we get views, but, but at the same time, we wanted to get a lot of ranking for the long-term benefits. And, and so that approach worked extremely, extremely well for us. So, so that's what one, of the, uh, one of the marketing channels that I want to share uh, with you. I'm sorry about that. I had figured this out yesterday. Something is not working today. Uh, okay, so the second marketing channel that I want to share with you is affiliate marketing. Uh, how many of you? How many of you have affiliate marketing program for your products? Could I see as a fan? Awesome. And how many of you don't have affiliate marketing uh, for your programs? Can I see hand? All right. Uh, may I know why don't you have affiliate uh, program for your? Uh, pro I'm, I'm working for. I'm working uh, on affiliate program myself. Okay. Okay. Anybody else? Can I say why they don't have affiliate marketing for their uh, their products? Anybody wants to share? Uh, all right, all right. Uh, so I've talked with, uh, I recently started using affiliate marketing uh, for my products, and I heard a lot about this. I am also affiliate marketers. I used to do affiliate marketing for other products as well a long, long time ago. Uh, but I had not used affiliate marketing for uh, my own product. Uh, but in, uh, I think last year, I started getting into uh, affiliate marketing. And there are a couple of things that I realized while I was doing affiliate marketing. You might have noticed that most of the sponsor that we have today, all of them have affiliate programs. Bluehost, SiteGround, Dolby Rocket, Godaddy, all of them have affiliate programs. And uh, so what is the reason these big brands have affiliate program? It is because you can increase your marketing effort at a scale without paying anybody anything as a salary. Right. So let's say I come to you and say to you that, okay, I'm going to send you a lot of traffic for your website, but you don't have to pay me anything. I'm going to send you hundreds and thousands of traffic for your website. Don't pay me anything, but if you get sales for the traffic that I bring you, give me 30% of it, or give me a certain amount of it. Right? And that is the power of affiliate marketing. If you have to hire, let's say, one, uh, one marketer or two marketers, how much you can hire? Maybe 10, maybe 20, 100, right? The cost is going to be extremely high for marketing team. But with affiliate marketing, you can work with a lot of influencers to increase your product sales. Right? Um, so the reason why we got into affiliate marketing was initially when we were trying to push our products uh, to ask other influencers to, reach, to list our products in their articles. Let's say 10 best themes. 10 best plugins, blah, 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 right? And so we would reach out to them and send them, can you include our products in your article? And most of them would ask, do you have an affiliate program? Because how, they are, how most marketers survive is they make money through uh, promoting other products, right? And so we didn't have affiliate programs back then, and we missed on a lot of opportunities. So we created these affiliate programs, and currently almost 5% of our revenue come just from the affiliate programs. 
And, and so, uh, a few, couple of things to keep in mind when, when you're getting into affiliate programs. First thing is, you need to have a simple um, affiliate page, right? And that's pretty easy to do. You have lots of plugins. We use affiliate WP plugin for doing that, uh, but you can find a lot of plugins. And then you have to make sure that those affiliate pages are visible, visible to the audience uh, when they come to a website. For example, do you have that in your header? Or do you have in the footer? Are you sending that or notifying users that you have an affiliate program on your website uh, or not? And therefore, it, it's extremely important that you educate your users that you have an affiliate program. What we also did was we reached out to a lot of influencers, a lot of bloggers, informing them that we have an affiliate programs and sign up for it. For example, so we, we have WordPress themes, we have WordPress plugins. And so we figured out who have articles about WordPress themes and who promote other WordPress themes. Now, if you go to Google right now and you search for, let's say, best WordPress themes or best WordPress plugin, you'll notice that out of top 10 products, most of them will have affiliate programs. And the, the influencer who are recommending are also linking to the affiliate programs. Right? And this is how the industry works. And it's very important to make sure that you're reaching to a lot of influencers who could promote your, your product. Uh, so that's the second marketing channel that I, I wanted to share with you. And moving on to the third marketing channel, Email marketing. Uh, can I see a raise of hand who use email here? OK. Pretty much everyone. OK. Uh, email mar I started email marketing a long, long time ago uh, when I was building the first product. Uh, but after that, I stopped it for some time. And I just started uh, to re uh, do email marketing again in 2022. And this is currently one of my favorite marketing channels. And I'm going to show you how I'm doing this affiliate mar uh, marketing through emails. And probably you will be able to take away some learning from here. So um, the two ways how we do uh, email marketing. The first one is that we do broadcasting. Uh, second one is we do email automations. So what is broadcasting and what is email automations? Let's talk about that. Let's say there is, we have developed a new product and we want to notify to all our users. We have more than 200,000 subscribers. So we want to send them an email that we have launched this product. Or we have Black Friday or Cyber Monday deals and we want to inform all the subscribers. So we send an email and this email is sent to everybody at the same time. Maybe a few minutes difference, but you get the idea, right? So we broadcast an email the advantage of broadcasting email is that you can get instant results and you can notify users uh, at the same time, right? So if you have, let's say, a deal, you don't want to wait for 10 days or 20 days to inform them, right? Because you have a deadline. So we, we do that. Second thing we do is through email automations. Uh, email automation, automation basically means that you create a sequence of email and these emails are triggered at a certain point of time when a user takes certain action. For example, if somebody downloads your product, or in our case, somebody downloads our product, we send a welcome email. When they take a certain action in that email, we send another email, right? So we have a couple of emails that we send when uh, a certain action are taken. And it has worked pretty well for us. Uh, to give an example, we, so recently, we got an email from one of our subscribers uh, where we have sent this email. And one thing that we do with our email is that we keep our email very personalized, and we also tell our story on how we build our product. For example, one of our products is Blossom Team. So my wife and I found this product. My wife is here. Um, so the idea we built this product was when we had this one product, and we were looking for Femi and WordPress teams, and there were not a lot in the market. And there was a lot of challenges on to females to build a female website, a female-friendly website. So, so we build this um, Blossom Themes. So we tell this story on how we build Blossom Themes. Similarly, for one of our products, which is WP Travel Engine, uh, I have 10, 10 years of experience of working with travel agency on building their website and marketing their website. So I tell the story on how I was able to come up with this idea and what is added on this, this product. What happens with that is people know your story. Like, probably you'll not remember my speech, but probably you'll remember that when I was in 2012, how I learned to build a website, right? Because people remember a story. 
And that's how we connect with the audience. Now, there's something about interacting with the founders. Uh, so all of our email goes through founders, and we get a lot of amazing responses. Somebody recommends features to our products, right? We, of course, we collect feature requests through other platforms, but they also uh, send an emails that, oh, why don't you add this feature to your product? This, this would be beneficial. They have questions about um, um, upgrades. They have questions about some services that they want to buy. In fact, uh, recently, we had this one question from a lady who wanted to buy two of our monthly subscriptions. And uh, um, probably would not have got that sales if it was not through personal emails. And so it has been extremely, extremely helpful for us. Now, it's extremely important that whenever you're doing any of these marketings, right, you broadcast or you do email automations, uh, you have to segment your users. Okay. Now, what I mean by segment, right? Anybody understand what is segmentation here? Okay, I, I can see one, uh, two hands, four or five. Okay, great. So what is segmentation? So let's say we have 200,000 subscribers, right? And if you send the same email every time to everybody, it might not be beneficial for everyone, right? To give an example, let's say somebody has downloaded education theme, somebody has downloaded coaching theme, right? To example. So if I send coaching messages to education and education messages to coaching, they will probably uns unsubscribe from the newsletter, right? So you want to segment this user and send very personalized emails according to what is essential to them. To give an example, if, I, if somebody has downloaded a product which is about, uh, let's say SEO, right? So I want to send articles about marketing, I want to send articles about SEO, right? Or if it is about blog post writing, I want to send an article about that. Because you want to personalize and you want to upscale that, right? And so it, probably many of you have been getting a lot of uh, emails from a lot of product companies, right? And you might have also unsubscribed that. And the reason why we unsubscribe is when something becomes irrelevant to us, right? So it's extremely important that whenever you segment your user, you send personalized email. And you can do that through automation. See, there are a lot of plugins in WordPress that you can tag whatever action or whatever product they have downloaded and uh, segment them. Uh, and we do a lot in our, all of our products. So that's the, the, the third thing that I wanted to share. Uh, in email marketing, just to give another example, before I came to WordCamp Asia, um, I sent an email uh, to our users, uh, promoting one of our affiliate programs. Right? And uh, out of 100 clicks, we were getting 10 sign up. Right? And that was 10% conversion. Right? Uh, and, uh, it was quite unbelievable when I saw the data. But probably it happened because we have been sending a lot of personalized emails. We understand our audience. So therefore, segmentation becomes important. You don't want to send the same email to everybody else. Uh, you, uh, you want to make sure that uh, you identify and uh, you know, segment this user, and so that send the email uh, different to each of them. So that's my third point on um, email marketing. And here is a, a screenshot of uh, one of the campaign, a few of the campaign that we have run. You can uh, you can see that uh, out of like so, we sent a thousand emails. We had almost. Uh, 2,000 click uh, or open. open. Uh, when we sent 1,400, we had 5,800. Um, 2,800 we sent and we had 1,800. So you can see that how many people are seeing the emails that we're sending. And this is the power of email marketing, right? When you are into different platforms, let's say YouTube, let's say search engine optimizations, right? Anytime they can ban you. Right. Maybe some of you also have been restricted on some platforms. But when you have your own email, those are your asset. And you can send those emails anytime, anytime you want. Right? So that's one of the benefit and power of uh, email marketing. Now, the fourth marketing channel that I want to talk about is WordPress org marketing channel. And this is something that was extremely, extremely helpful to us when, at the beginning of our, our, our product. So when we started building product, uh, we didn't have a lot of budgets, and uh, we were focusing on mostly on WordPress org marketing channels. And uh, there are a couple of things that we were doing, and I think um, that will be beneficial for a lot of you. So 
depending on whether you have theme products or plugin products, or you have hosting, some, something else, right? The certain ways how you can market these products. For listed themes, what we were doing, so there are two, at least in my knowledge, there are two ways how people are make, marketing WordPress themes. Either they create a brand, okay? So your brand and you, you, your theme become popular because of brand. Or second is dominate the search on WordPress org. Now, there are three ways generally how people discover uh, WordPress themes or plugins. The first one is WordPress org repository. Second is on WordPress dashboard. And third is by search engine. And through optimizations, you want to be able to improve your ranking on all of this. Because if your product is ranked on top positions, you are going to get a lot of clicks. And I'm going to show you one slide where we did a small optimizations and how we were able to increase our organic traffic by four times. Right? And, and so, so if you have themes, uh, one thing that we did was we included keywords in our product, product name. So for example, uh, one of our product is Blossom Themes. And uh, so we had our product name, and then we had the keyword. For example, uh, Blossom Coach. Right? So whenever somebody is searching about coaching theme, there's a Blossom. Uh, then we have Coach. Somebody shop, uh, search for shop, we had Blossom Shop. Right? And that worked very well for us for two reasons. One, on WordPress org itself, when somebody is searching for, let's say, shop or coaching or anything else, they would discover our product, one. Second, also on search engine. Right? If you go to search engine, let's say like Google, and you search for coaching WordPress team or chic WordPress team, you'll see some products which are ranked from WordPress org. Of course, your website might also rank, but they also give priority to WordPress org in terms of ranking. So that worked extremely well for us. In terms of plugin, plugin is slightly different uh, from the theme. There are a lot of things to take care of when you are optimizing your plugin. Uh, there is, of course, title, which is important. Uh, so you want to keep the keyword uh, of your product in the title. For example, let's say if your product is about um, search engine optimization, SEO. Right? Uh, to give an example, let's say Yoast. Right? Yoast is one of the most popular plugins. So they have Yoast. Then you'll see they have SEO in their keyword because people will also search about, go to WordPress org and they'll search about SEO, right? And that's how they'll discover. You have to make sure that your keyword is also included in the descriptions. Uh, your support, you have to provide support and make sure that the tickets are handled properly and resolved. You, you have to make sure that it is compatible with the latest version uh, with WordPress org. Now, the last thing I want to share here is, and that has worked extremely well for us. Uh, at least when, when we had this feature section in WordPress. How many have seen this feature sec uh, session, uh, section in WordPress org directory, theme directory, right? Okay, I can see a few hands, okay. So back then when it was, uh, I think a couple of years back, uh, one thing that we focused on was translation. And I think a lot of companies I've seen not doing that. And that worked extremely, extremely well for us. So, Whenever somebody is from different country, not English, uh, we're not speaking English for some other countries, and they go to their country WordPress org directory, and they search for their keywords, if you don't have your uh, theme or plugin optimized for those keywords, it will not show up. Right? Even you might have a lot of active installs, uh, great reviews, it will not show up. So we figured that out, and we did translation of our themes. And I remember uh, back then, uh, we translated our theme uh, into Japanese, and uh, a lot of Japanese volunteers are very, very kind to us, and I made a few today as well. Um, and because we translated our theme and plug theme into Japanese, we saw a large number of customers coming from Japan and buying our product. In fact, at one point of time, out of 100 customers, probably 10 to 15 were from Japan. And it happened because of that translation. As we figured that out, we started to do more translation of our, of, our, of, our, of our product. So one of the ways how you could leverage this is just reach out to people who translate. You can go to WordPress or find out who translate the, the products and just request them. And they will be you know, very, very happy to volunteer and do the translation. Um, so, so that works for us. And I hope that you know, uh, it might also work for you. Now, it's important to know that 
there are a lot of, lot of marketing channels, uh, and you might also have the questions, which marketing channels should you focus on, right? Um, I have talked about, okay, this is one of the examples that I mentioned earlier. I want to show the slide of optimizations. So this screenshot is from HREF, uh, which is a search, um, it's a SEO tool, which gives you a lot of analytics. And you can see that before we did the optimizations, we had probably 15 traffic, right? And uh, after the optimizations, we had almost 100 traffic. Uh, and it's a, it's a very simple trick. It took us like, like a few hours to do this, but it worked for us. And uh, this traffic is not from WordPress org itself. It was from search engine, which also means that we're getting a lot of traffic from WordPress org as well. So like I said, there are a lot of uh, marketing channels. We talked about four, right? But which marketing channels should you, should you focus on? Now, for that, you need to find what is your customer acquisition cost, and that is the key to remember. So let's say you work with uh, affiliate marketer or influencer, and um, let's say you're spending $1,000, uh, and you are getting sales of 2000 So basically, your customer acquisition cost is $50, right? And, and so you need to figure out what is your customer acquisition cost, cost throughout all the marketing channel. If you have budget, try everything, right? There are a lot of marketing channels. Uh, but if you're limited on budget, you need to figure out what is your customer acquisition cost, and then decide what is the marketing channel that you want to use. Okay? But remember that some marketing channel will work for you, some might not work for you. When I started, uh, I was doing like a long, long time ago, Google Ads marketing, and it didn't work for me back then. Now I'm doing experiment with Google Ads marketing, and it's working for me. So you have to be uh, you know, open-minded, try a lot of things, and then hopefully something will work for you. So with this, I have come to a conclusion uh, of, of uh, my presentation. So just to wrap up the key takeaways, the first one is the YouTube marketing. Right? You want to work uh, with a lot of influencers. You want to do yourself. But make sure that you are also targeting regional content uh, by working with regional content creator. Second was uh, uh, affiliate marketing. Right? Um, there are a lot of companies doing it. You should also explore if you are not already doing that. Third was email marketing. You can broadcast, you can send email automation, but make sure that you have personalized the content. Tell your story. Uh, I, I think that would be extremely powerful. And make sure that you have segmentations. And the fourth is uh, WordPress org marketing. Optimize, but make sure that you also translate uh, your content. With this, I would like to... What was the second one? Uh, second one was affiliate marketing. Okay. So with this, I have come to conclusions of my presentations. And uh, thank you so much. If you have any questions, please...